Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Hello. We have won a lecture here because we have now time to really slowly go on to very nice topics. I think easy to understand. We're still with clustering and now we have the chance to go back to the EM expectation maximization algorithm to K-means algorithm and Gauche motion models, which we looked at really too short. Uh, when we actually looked at future generation of all the signals where we started for a little time, now we have the chance to go back. And we see the main things over here, K means, what does it do? It assigns actually a membership to some points which are closest to a certain cluster. Cluster center is a grid which is not defined a priori. We have to find it ourselves, but we have to define and specify how many clusters we want to see in that data. So K is specified from outside. If we look at Gaussian mixture models, we will see that K means is actually a special case of a Gaussian mixture model in the case where the variances are uniform in all directions. Means instead of ellipses here, we would have circles in two dimensions or in terms of ellipsoids in higher dimensions, which uh, visualize the variance in that direction, uh, we would have balls, <laughs> spherical balls, which cannot now assume that the cluster shape is something different than circle. Okay? But a Gaussian mixture model can do that. Common with all these models is that um, we don't know the cluster assignment that we did in the beginning. We just have these data points, x and y, but we don't have the color coding of each cluster. We don't know which point belongs to which cluster. So this assignment is a hidden variable. And whenever we want to estimate a likelihood of a probability distribution with hidden variables, here yeah, they're also called latent variables, we can use the expectation maximization algorithm. In principle, I try to write it down here. The likelihood is always something like the probability of the data given the model. And I take as a symbol for the model now the parameters that describe the model. In the case of a Gaussian mixture model, this would be the means, with the variances in all directions, the covariance matrix, the mean vector. In our case, this is actually our data vector in the third normal form, tidy data form, given the data, and given the parameters. And the problem with the problem with, with the thing we have now, uh, this probability also depends on a latent variable, on the assignment, which we don't have at the beginning. And we would say if we can write it like this, um, it's the sum all over, it's a marginalization, we integrate over this hidden variable, over all the joint probability x and z given k. Something like that. So we can actually integrate that latent variable out. Latent means actually hidden. And it's in our case it's the cluster assignment. To which cluster does it belong? Is it the cluster one and two or three? And now whenever we want to maximize this one. So we say, okay, max this here. We want to maximize the likelihood of the data given our parameters. We will see that we have a problem. Let's say we take the log likelihood. And then you see, okay, this is not that easy. Log of px given theta is a logarithm of a sum of the sum over all hidden variables set of the joint probability distribution of the labeled data. If we had the label, we could say, okay, that's a new data set, x prime. That's the labeled data set, which you don't have at the beginning. And you see, okay, um, the logarithm of the sum sum cannot be reduced easily, and that's why we cannot calculate this uh, like likelihood analytically. This doesn't turn out to be just a square error term or something like that. That's why we need a, an algorithm to solve that. And the expectation algorithm can do that, especially good for estimation 
of uh, likelihoods with given hidden values. Now, then we will see how this produces this one. This is a marginalization, if you remember, from Bayes' theorem. Marginalized over, over Z. And we get it out, but we have to know all the possible sets here, or the distribution of the sets. And that's the first thing we have to estimate. How are these sets distributed? So expectation is more, expectation maximization is more than just the procedure to get a fit for the Gaussian Lipschitz noise. No? It can be used in general terms. So I flip it a little bit back. Good. Um, I think today we really have enough time and they prepared also some checkup questions probably you've seen on the Moodle. And I intend to go with you through these questions, to discuss them, to answer questions from your side in probably after one hour or as soon as we finish. Right. Okay, we start with k-means again. K-means. Hmm? Now in a mathematical term, what does k-means really do? It minimizes this cost function. And when we try to interpret this cost function here, we would say, ah, that's something like, it is the inertia of a cluster. And this set n, this is now the cluster sign n. Does point n belong to cluster k? If this is the case, then set n k is one, otherwise it's zero. So it's just a number between zero and one. So this sum only goes actually to one when a point is assigned to be in that cluster. And what we want to minimize here is actually here the inertia all over the cluster. So every cluster should be as compact as possible. The inertia, in mechanical terms, we would call it added the moment of inertia. That's Trekant's moment. Moment of inertia, it should be compact. The masses should be close to the center. Then we have a low moment of inertia. Okay, what is unknown? The means are unknown, the centroids here. The sign of the sun, no, but we know it must be long, at least to one cluster. And this means we do a complete clustering. Every point gets an assignment. Different to EB scan, for example, where we also have noise points. Huh? They belong to nothing. They're just noise. Here we get an assignment, either you're in or out. You have to decide. Even the outliers. Huh? And when you look at the full data set, we could arrange that in arrays or matrices. So this is the same of all data points. So these are vectors containing zeros and ones, and only one one if this point belongs to cluster K. And then at the K row, actually it's a one. These are the cluster centers for for our K K clusters for for K. Yeah, K clusters. Okay, for fixed centers, um, the cost is minimized if you map each sample to its nearest center. This we can show. So if we do the derivative of this cost function, we will get automatically out this solution. And um, a simple assignment then to the closest center is, is a good solution. But the, the center at the beginning is not known. So a good way to do it would be we start with some centers, one to be k here, we initialize some points, let us say this could be the cluster centers at the beginning. It's the initialization. And then we compute, we compute the cluster assignment set n. So do you belong to this cluster or not? Huh? So we would take the closest, if this, we, we would assign it to the closest center in your Euclidean distance. Euclidean distance is the ball around. So we see already now, okay, this is a uniform distribution around these clusters. These are round clusters which are looking for. Is already here, given by the distance measure we have. And then in the second step, okay, we update our centers. Because now we know which point really is assigned to the cost of k, and we can sum it up and just calculate actually the mean over it. And then we'd say, okay, the next step we have updated centers, and then we go through. And we do this as much <coughs> as many times as necessary because it can be shown actually that this cost function is discrete <coughs> and easy. Right? So it will converge, but it will only converge to a local minimum. Right? So this algorithm is not guaranteed to find the best clustering, but it depends 
on the initialization, on the beginning. And that's also what we've seen, and there are different strategies how to avoid actually falling into a local renewal. One way is just start several times, look what happens. Or uh, the K means plus plus algorithm option tries to sample from this distribution of the data such that every data form is taken. So if we take the derivative explicitly now, we actually get x exactly what we would say is a, is a, is a meaningful approach. Just calculate the mean after the assignments set. And this is also the solution. It's nothing else than calculating the mean of all coordinates belonging to plus k in a different way. But why do I write this? Because now, what we do in the next step, this assignment is not no longer hard. It's not lo no longer either you're in this cluster or out. We can also give this points a certain probability that he belongs actually to a certain cluster. And this makes especially dense sense when, when we have overlapping groups, where actually a separation of the data is no longer possible. There it would be nice, okay, with a probability of 60%. We still belong to this, this cluster here, and the 40, yeah, we belong to that. So you can express a certain uncertainty using a soft clustering method, not a hard one. So as long as these sets are one and zeros, it's called a hard cluster. If this is a probability belonging to a cluster, then it's a called a soft cluster. Okay, in a general term, the algorithm we've seen in words before can also be expressed mathematically in that one and in, in generally it belongs to a class of algorithms which are called coordinate descent algorithms. So we first update the assignment giving our cost function by minimizing all the sets here. So we take with given news and we take the smallest set here for the assignment of the new process. And the next step, we take the same bat, we take the minimum of the arguments of the, of the news. So the minimum cost function, now we take the new, not no longer sign. In both cases, actually, L is minimized, but we look for a different argument. First, we look for the argument set, feed it in here, and then minimize it in a second step again. But now, keeping this one fixed and only varying the second argument. Huh? So we look actually first in this slice, and in this slice, and we do it as worth of step by step twice. So, no global optimum, but a local is guaranteed. And now, how can we interpret this in, in terms of uh, probability? If we don't have a fixed assignment in terms of one and zeros, we would call actually the set can now be expressed with a certain probability. Let's see, when we say the probability of the data, so the probability, the likelihood of the data given the assignment and the, the mean, it comes from a normal distribution centered here at the position of the cluster, at the center side of the cluster, with a covariance matrix which is equally one. This is the first step. And if we assign actually here such a covariance matrix, which is uniform in all directions, we will get the k means algorithms because it looks in all directions with the same variance. Now we can say, okay, as soon as this, this is one, we get the probability distribution. This Gaussian path actually is a center around this real k. If it's zero, then we get just a one. If it's not in that one. So we just count actually here the probabilities. And the likelihood is then the product of all the probabilities. Huh? Now for every data point, we have to multiply also over all the data. Huh? So this is the product over all k clusters. And you will see there are um, k minus one at once and only one n. There, huh? So this is only one n where we have the assignment and the rest is only to the power of zero, to the power of zero. Huh? So it's, it's a simple term here, only once this n will turn up. But here we sum up or we, pro we, we calculate the total likelihood of all data points, which is then the probability times the probability times the probability of the third point and so on. So the total probability, the total likelihood of the data given our model. 
If we take the logarithm, because often it's simpler actually to maximize the logarithm here, or the negative logarithm actually, we get the same cost functions as before. It's, it's again the inertia here. So it's, it's the same thing, and with this actually it's proved, okay, k-means algorithm, cost function that we defined there as minimizing the inertia is the same thing as assigning actually to each data point to each center uh, a Gaussian distribution with a given variance of one centered at the centered position u. And so we see again, okay, it's only summed up if zn of k is equal to one, otherwise it's not. So it, it leads to the same cost function. And now we go a step further and say, okay, here actually this could also be a probability. Okay, this is what I mean by soft clustering. Now assigning not only one cluster to, to a given data point, but just a probability. So that the sum of the probability is one, so it must belong into total to all these clusters. And uh, this is called soft clustering. And then we get closer to that Gaussian mutual model, where we say, okay, there are overlapping Gaussians, and actually the amount of assignment to such a Gaussian curve is just given by the probability how close it is to the center. This is called soft or fuzzy clustering. We have the same thing here, Gaussians, but the difference is now only this term, the covariance function. Now we allow these this clusters to be elliptically shaped in this n-dimensional space. Um, so we add here covariance function or matrix. It's no longer a one, but we have actually the same likelihood function given z u and now another parameter the sigma which is also not known. We allow elliptical clusters. Now what do we have? Okay, we say okay the probability that a certain point belongs to cluster k we express by a pk. This is a number between 0 and 1 and we say okay the probability that it belongs to one cluster at all must be 1. So the sum over all pk's comes up to 1. And we can say, okay, if we marginalize this out, then the probability that of these data points, this is now the vector set for all data points, it's, this, it's the product over all clusters. Okay, so in general, a Gaussian mixture model is a probabilistic model that assumes that all data points are generated from a mixture, sum means this, of, of a finite number k of Gaussian distributions with unknown parameters mu k and sigma k. So it's a generalized k-means where we allow elliptical shapes and we assign not only quasi cluster belongings, one or zero, but we allow probabilities as assignments for the data. It's the fastest algorithm here. Um, uh, it has some problems uh, um, because it, it's not unbiased. Huh? As the algorithm minimizes only the likelihood of the posterior, so it will not bias the means towards zero. So there will be an offset state. And there's also a problem in this here when we say, okay, a cluster is only made of three points. Then the problem is actually how do we calculate the reliable estimate of the covariance matrix only with three points? This is the other limit. We have two less points, two few points in a cluster, then we have here kind of singularity because the sigma here is not well defined. So we need a lot of points for a cluster to be well defined. Okay, K and N, we could visualize like this, assigns circular boundaries, spherical shape boundaries and clusters. They're now here well separated, probably those, yeah, they can also be linearly separated. And when we have elliptical shapes in the data, actually, the K means algorithm might have a problem, especially with these two groups. They cannot be separated that well using a unity covariance matrix because the size 
of the variances in every direction is the same. So there's a big overlap, but this mustn't, this shouldn't be, or this could be avoided by allowing elliptical shaped clusters. And this is what a Gaussian Nixon model does. How, where do we see now the Gaussian Nixon model? You have to see what we see, what we get is only the data, the data without color. So we just get a jump of data, and we do not know how many clusters there are at the beginning. And we do not know to which cluster each point belongs. So it's just gray dots. And the Mitchell model is the sum of all these Gaussian curves we would visualize as 3D shaped functions over this area here. So we would see a, a complicated probability distribution for these points, actually, without these colors, as a sum, as a superposition of different Gaussian curves, Gaussian, Gaussian bell shaped curves. And the Gaussian Mitchell model assigns then really a probability, not this is a hard clustering here, we're here, here. And we would say, okay, the probability that you belong to this cluster here is, is probably 80%, 60, 20, and so on. So we can assign this one. And then we have overlapping curves where we would say, okay, here the probability is probably 50 50 here. So this will be the boundary, the decision boundary between these two clusters. This is what we get more. We actually get a nice decision boundary. And what we also get more from the Gaussian Nixon model is this one here. After estimating the covariance matrices out of the data, we will get actually the correct shape of this cluster if they really stem from a, from a Gaussian bell Gaussian shape, the high dimensional distribution. So we will also get that and then be able to separate and assign the, the right cluster assignment to the data types. Um, yeah, that's it. How do we do that? So we have parameters that we have to estimate. From our Gaussian Nixon model, which consists actually of a sum of high dimensional Gaussian distributions in a d-dimensional space, we have to estimate for each Gaussian bell-shaped curve the mean, the variance, and here the assignments, the probabilities of each uh, data point belonging to the cost. The joint probability is now given by the product rule as this one. So you know from the product rule of probability that we can take that out by multiplying by the conditional probability from seven given pi because we said it does not depend on u and sigma only on pi so the product product rule of probability says you can you can actually calculate it out if you take actually the probability given the, the data given given the assignment and given the u and the sigma times the probability um, uh, of this assignment given the pi, given these probabilities. And then if we go over all data, this is the data points, over all clusters here, we get, if you put that in one, um, the same thing as before. We have the normal distribution sent to the values <coughs> points. To the power of 7k, this is still a number between 0 and 1 times the product over all k of this pk to the power of 7k. Yeah, and these are the latent variables we don't have, the second K. So how do we do it? If we marginalize that out, this is not shown here, we get a cost function here for the single data point, which looks like that. And that is also what we would expect. We assign with a certain probability PK that a certain point XN belongs to this cluster K. This is now a soft cluster assignment. The probability that we find this point, given our model, given our parameters of the model, is exactly, actually, how close it is it to this Gaussian distribution, close one here to everyone, and with what probability does it belong to that one? So these are separate parameters. And that's actually what we get. That's the Gaussian Nixon model without the assignment. This is if we have the assignment using the Latin variable set. And actually, what we try to estimate is actually that. This is the, the Gaussian distribution over all these data points 
now put together for three different Gaussian distributions. Of course, we want to have these assignments. Huh? They're really helpful if we want to separate, for example, yeah, one, one, one good example is, can we separate two, two populations, people? Just give them, for example, the height, the weight, and the mass index or so. Can we separate, for example, males and females from them? Would mean we don't have the assignment of the sex, but we could try to estimate it out just given actually the, the body data. Huh? But then we would also see that there is a big overlap of this data, and there's a big range, there's a big region where we cannot really assign a clear, clear uh, uh, sex to these, to these people. So let's work it out. To maximize, we have then to take the logarithm of this uh, likelihood function. The logarithm of the likelihood function of the total data given our parameters. And now, yeah, this is the problem here. It's uh, a logarithm of a sum. So we cannot use, actually, although these are nice exponential functions, you see, I cannot just take the logarithm of the sum. So I'm, I'm stuck here. I cannot find an analytical solution for that because the sum is already here. It's this probability is pk only given here. So we have to do it now again. And this is now the expectation maximization algorithms in two steps. First of all, actually, we calculate an estimate for our assignments. These are the sets, but it's actually an estimate of the set, which is now a soft number. Huh? Which one does this data point belong to? So what is the probability that actually this data point n here belongs to cluster K, given our actual parameters theta t in step t and this data point xn. We do that actually, we get actually this one, the probability of this times a normal distribution with the estimates as time step t, given mu k and given sigma k with the probability weighted over the sum over all clusters. This is just a normalization function. So this is actually an estimate of our set. So we say, OK, we have a probability that point n belongs to cluster k. Using that, actually, we can get a weighted sum as an update for our new cluster center. This is not now no longer 1 and 0, but it's a, a value between 0 and 1. And if the sum over all gamma and k is 1, we sum over um, all, all over clusters here. I call this the big set here. And so we get an update now in the second step of the news. We also get an, ups, uh, an, up, an update of the, the cluster probabilities, which is the sum over all gamma and k is divided by n. And at least, actually, we make an update of the variance, the covariance matrix, which is just here again, yeah, the variance function here, weighted by this assignment at step t. And now this is actually the M step, the maximization step. It's actually called the yeah, maximization step. It is, um, it is uh, an estimate of these new parameters, right? a weighted estimate using these weights, gamma, gamma, and gamma. And this we do in a loop as long or so long uh, until it converges. It converges means it's stable, it doesn't change anymore. These weights do not change. Okay, and if we look, for example, in our notebook, and this is in the exercises of the last lesson, we skipped actually that one. Uh, we can shortly go back to this exercise. Um, I close it here. Gaussian mixture model and the expectation maximization algorithm. Um, I switch off the warnings. What we need here are multivariate normal distributions. <coughs> so, I hope it's in, yes. Um, so, 
to say EM is really a general algorithm. It can be used to maximize and optimize a likelihood function with hidden variables in general. And it does it by doing the things in two steps, optimizing the first one direction and the next, and iterating between these two until convergence reached. Um, this is the example which I meant. If we have, for example, here an assignment of the gender, male or female, and we try to, now in a one-dimensional distribution, separate these two genders out, we could use to say, okay, this is actually coming from a Gaussian niche model for each population, they male, female, actually centered at some mean height. So this is the data. And now we don't have the gender labels, that's the idea. So we want to calculate mm, those gender labels. And the idea is actually that those data are distributed Gaussian-like, so like the normal distributions are around the center, uh, new, given some variance sigma. Mm. And this would mean, okay, what's the probability that some data point belongs to this gender? It is smaller the further I'm away, and it varies this likelihood function varies here using this normalization function like a Gaussian shape curve. Using actually now the assignment we have, this is the estimate of our gender assignment, we can calculate a new mean. That's the maximization strategy. Using the same formula. So his gamma is actually the expectation value of set the assignment of a certain data point belonging to cluster K or J. So, again, maximum likelihood estimate, you could look what is the idea between maximum likelihood. I put it here. This is a nice example from a coin flip example, where we would say, this is the frequency way. The other one would be actually more the Bayesian way to calculate probabilities. Uh, I skip this now, we go further. Here. Yeah, we, we go now step by step to this. At the beginning, actually, our means, they're wrong, and also actually the variances are wrong. The update of the variances are not shown here. I've shown it on the transparency. So we would see, okay, given the data points which are centered around here, we cannot really truly separate these two, two genders. But then we let it iterate here. This is the data points, you know be male, chief, female, and so on. Already the first iteration step brings that one. So a reduction actually of the variances and shifts the mu's towards the real center sizes. And then if we iterate further, we would say, okay, it's almost separable. Of course, we have an overlap in the decision boundary where the probabilities are equal to assign the gender male or female is about here. And this will not change a lot anymore. And then we have converged actually in the EM algorithm step and would stop after this assignment. So it's, it's done in two sizes. If we have to estimate here the maximum of the logarithm of that one, we first make an estimate of that, put it into it, and then make an estimate of that. And then we go back iteratively. That's actually the idea of expectation maximization. And we need a, an algorithmic iterative numeric procedure because the logarithm of the sum of Gaussians cannot be evaluated analytically. So it's not a simple means, mean squared error. Okay. So that's, that's more or less all I have to say about expectation maximization. First of all, it's a very general algorithm. It's not only used for Gaussian Lipschitz models. It's used for every uh, optimization given for a likelihood function, even hidden variables like this, this cluster assignment. Um, yeah, the idea is actually we don't know which point belongs belongs to which cluster. We assign a soft probability to each data point to which cluster, uh, cluster center it belongs. And it will be at the same time to, to many clusters with a certain probability. And 
Uh, actually, it's quite easy, and we convert it to unwell using the expectation maximization. So these, again, these two steps. We first, in each step, make new assignments, soft assignments to give an center. To all the centers, we give an assignment. And using, actually, this assignment, uh, we calculate an update for the new uh, center uh, cost the centers and the covariance matrices of it. And this can be done in high dimensions as well. I showed it in one dimension, two dimension, but it generally works in many dimensions. The estimate of the covariance function here, as it is written, you see, we estimate actually full, full matrix okay, using this formula. That's not only the number here, this is the full matrix. And in the exercises, we explicitly use these formulas once to really calculate, okay, to which cluster actually uh, this data point belongs and what is the probability that it belongs to the other cluster. Just to know, okay, how, how it is calculated. But I hope you've seen that actually it comes normally actually from K means as written. What we do the first step is saying, okay, they're no longer hard. This, this assignment, and they say in the second step, okay, they can be elliptically shaped, then we're already actually in a Gaussian machine. And K means as algorithm by assigning just the closest center or the, to, to, to a certain data point, is already actually maximizing this cost function, this log probability of the, of the data given, given the so it's the same, right? it's just different grades of, of, of complexity in these problems. And when did we see these Gaussian mixture models first? Actually, I've shown it when we tried to understand how speaker recognition, voice recognition is done, or speaker identification. We saw actually that uh, using these CAPSCO coefficients, actually, we can use actually those as features to discriminate different speakers from each other. But this wasn't done directly in the paper we showed, but it was done by using a Gaussian mixture model to, to model, actually, the distribution of these capsule components. And then assigning the speaker given actually, given, actually, a Gaussian mixture model of the capsule coefficients. Then we would say, okay, to which distribution does this speaker best belong? It's the same as saying, okay, to which cluster here does actually this data point belong? What's the highest probability? Then we would assign it to this speaker. So it is in the abstract features that we have using a Gaussian mixture model to model the distribution, for example, for capsule components of different speakers. And it's quite a compact way, actually, to represent these, uh, yeah, these features, the distribution of these features, given the samples we have. So we can generalize very fast. What are some questions to this one? Then I would say, let's make five minutes break, and then we start with the exercise.